Hello and welcome back to the Marvelous Martels. So, we have, well, we have an ally, which is just waiting for us here in the Reach. We have Willis Tyrell. If we form an alliance with him, that gets us a very, very strong ally in our fight, well, to take the Iron Throne. So, that will add another 43,000 to our 24,000. So, that's a very, very good start here. Still trying to seduce some of my vassals. Uh, do we actually need to seduce her anymore? She actually likes us. Hmm. I don't think we need to seduce her anymore. So what we could probably do is seduce someone else if there's somebody else we need to seduce. No, there isn't anyone. Okay, so she's the only one we need to seduce. Unless I want to kill these people to get rid of them. Let's have a look. Just seeing whether any of these ones can be like, um... Uh, this count who doesn't like me here. Uh, he's the your part of nothing, but he's a lordship. I'm going to keep seducing her. I could potentially get rid of this count by putting him underneath someone else, like underneath the duke. So maybe underneath Great Wick. That seems possible, yeah. And then that means Great Wick will like me more. So if I transfer Vassal there. And I'm looking for Lonely Light. There we go. That gets us an extra 10 opinion. Isn't too bad. Still makes them a little bit off, but a gift would now put them into the positive opinions. Nice. And of course we're changing opinion so that we can eventually change the succession law. So, that gives us a little bit more opinion there. So a gift will do him. How much of a gift do we need? 28. Okay, so we have the money right now. This guy, Orkmunt. Does your part of the Sea Stone Isles, which doesn't exist. Okay. You, uh, like me. Okay, how much is it to create the Sea Stone Isles? It is. Oh, I would have... To, okay, they would have to create it. Never mind. Okay, uh, instead of that, Orkman, given he doesn't like me, I could put underneath someone else. Let's have a look here at who doesn't... Uh, that's the wrong menu. Let's have a look at who doesn't like me here. So, Harlo, I could put it underneath, right? They're right next door. Yeah, I'm going to transfer Orkman underneath at Harlo. Yeah, there we go. That means that Harlaw now likes me by two. He goes into the likes me column. So that means that the only person who doesn't like me is Balon Greyjoy. How do I convert Balon Greyjoy? Well, that's a difficult question. As he has a negative 20 on us here. Uh, I can send him a gift, which gives us 26. I can do that now. That puts him at 49, 29. I can also award him the honorary title. Mm, but that'll only get him 5. So that would put him at 20, negative 24. I could give him Burning Sand for a 30 opinion boost, and that would be good. That would work, but I don't want to give him my sword. Hmm. I could send my... Ah, I don't have anyone who can be educated because they're all too young. Yeah. Okay, so I can't send someone to be educated by him. I guess I just sway him. Yeah, I start swaying him. I think that's my, my move. And we know that we can get... Uh, how much was it? We got 5 plus 26. We got 31 opinion boost, basically. So we need... If we get a 20, if we get 24 opinion, we can then convert him and the other guy. So that's fine. We're, we're ready. We know what our situation is. And once that happens, we can secure the Iron Isles. And that's a very good situation to be in. Right. Let's go. Uh, we'll keep trying to seduce her, obviously. Why not? Okay, Asha Greyjoy was just murdered, and Balin Greyjoy had Black Wind added to the treasury. Black Wind is another boat. Okay, interesting. Oh, and that's Asha Greyjoy who was just murdered. Interesting. Oh, okay. Um, right, so we're still trying to seduce her. Actually, I just noticed something in... So it's Ash, he's, this is Asha's son. Oh, okay. Who's, uh, yeah, who's taking over that. But that's a very interesting line that that's gone down. Oh, yeah, obviously we're going to tea, er, we're going to tease Simon here. That's fine. Uh, that's just something that has to be done. Ooh, I'm attending a festive outing with Lady Garika. I'll leave her a note to meet me by the stream. She was, she's there. I'm going straight up for the loot suggestion. 
We spent a long time making love in the water, and obviously she's going to fall in love with us. That's just the way it has to be. Right. So that seduction is done. Uh, do I need to do anything with this person? He wants to become... He just wants to draw my core. Uh, it's not bad, I suppose. The 19 marshal is fairly good. Yeah, we'll take him. That's fine. And he can become a commander. I mean, most of our commanders are fairly good, actually, but, you know, we can maybe upgrade one. Let's upgrade that one. Yeah, sure. Right. My wife has retired to the set for a short while to gather her thoughts and find some peace, maybe even the gods. Well, obviously, I'm going to spend some time with my new lover. That's just the way things have to be. Uh, that's the Peasant's Revolt in the uh, Iron Kingdom over, or the Iron Throne. Um, I don't recognize my friend Manfrey anymore. The things we had in common when we first met and became friends have changed and vanished. Yes, na now he's gone become a black brother. Whenever I meet him, I ask myself, is this the person I want to be friends with? Can we really be friends despite all of our differences? No, he's going to be our friend. Definitely. That's just fantastic. You know, no reason to say no to that. Desmond was beheaded. My acquaintance in that I didn't really know him at all, but that's fine. Right. Do we attend this uh, tourney? Sure, we'll attend this tourney. I'd like to join in, but I guess not. You want to join my court? You got 20! Ah, oh, yes, definitely you can join my court, Sir William. Uh, and I will replace my 16 with you. Yeah, wow. That, that is amazing. Lord Balin still resists my attempts to establish a solid relationship between us. It's quite infuriating. I wonder what I could do to make him come to his senses faster. Send him a letter. Just, I will tell him to be my friend, or I can't be bothered with this. No, I will send him a letter. He seems to be like a reasonable person. It was not well received. I had a lovely dinner, neighbor, and some wine. Uh, I had a lovely dinner, neighbor, and after some wine, we were both a bit drunk. And if I read the situation correctly, more than a little attracted to each other. Okay, so I'm retiring to a private place with Sir Ronald. Yeah, sure, why not? Never mind, with the Aleary Torrent. Completely different. Um, we ended up in a room with a big bed in the middle of the room. The cell horse, a pale green wine, and the obvious attraction between us led to a pleasant evening. It was a good tumble. Yeah. Anyone in this tourney that I care about? Manfrey Martell. Is that our friend Mar Manfrey or is that a different Manfrey? I'll place a bet. So, I think that was Manfrey here, right? I think that would be this Manfrey. Yeah, we're going to place a small bet on him. Just a little wager. Right. So, Damon has fallen foul of the faith and he's been called by the High Septum to King's Landing to face judgment for his alleged sins. Damon nobly agreed to this demand and freely submitted himself to the faith's custody. Hmm. He's been imprisoned. My bet has been lost! Oh no! Already! He lost in round one. Alla the Yernwood and Marin Yernwood jousted, and Marin was the winner. Were those brothers? Brothers? No, they're just, well, you know, sort of related. Uh, Timoth Alarion and Ricasso Sonar were next to joust. Ricasso was on horse, leaving Timoth to be declared the winner. That's uh, one of our new commanders. Fantastic news. Okay. And then it was Timoth versus Alar. And Timoth was declared the winner. Fantastic. Great all, great news all around. And the journey is over. Aleri claims he starts to show signs of pregnancy after your last night of lovemaking, but she says she'll drink some moon tea to present, prevent any scandalous birth. Uh, nah, you don't need to do that. Aleri agreed not to take the moon tea and will have your child. She'll begrudgingly pass it off as Sir Agers. Hmm, not quite what I was going for. Um, I invite you to attend the High Tourney of Highgarden. Uh, attend the Grand Tourney of Highgarden, where the finest knights and lords of the realm shall be invited to find out who's the most gallant and able knight in the land. Yeah, sure, let's go. Uh, favors are being joined. Or, or being used to make people join councils, that's what I was going for. Right, wife is having a child. 
It's Sir Sebastian Plum's turn to joust, but the two crowd shock. He stumbles out to the table tourney field late and clearly drunk from too much blackberry wine, with none of his armour and only slightly more of his clothing. He tries to mount his horse, but trips and falls comically to the ground, unable even to ride. Much to his relief, Lord Paramount Willis Tyrell of the Reach seems to find this hilarious. How embarrassing, yeah. Um, I had a lovely dinner, neighbour, and after some wine we were both a bit drunk, and yeah, Lady Lo Lorera Lo Loria, it reckons this time? Yeah, we'll slip away with her. Went up in a room, and uh, despite the fine high garden Hippocaras and the obvious attraction between us, Lorera suddenly felt awkward and made an excuse to leave. That's probably for the best, yeah. Right, Lord Remote Kaelin's been taken again. Right, so let's see what we got here. Uh, anybody I want to actually put money on? Don't think so. No. No, I think we're fine. Oh no, Timothy Larian. Yeah, I'll place a bet. While at Tourney, I joined in tournament. I joined in a conversation with other lords on how to best collect tides. I thought and the, I saw a far easier way, and it caused quite an argument with many lords disagreeing with my stance. But the more I talked, the more I convinced myself I was right. But I was wrong and lost the stewardship. Okay. Well, uh, Sir Timoth, I am now going to place a bet. I'm going to place a medium bet on him. It's a bigger tournament. Timoth was declared the winner of the first uh, bout, and then he lost the second to Sir Alkeen. All right, he's very, very good. Is Timoth good at this? Actually, not very. Oh, okay. My bet has been lost. Oh, no. Two more people jousted. Two more people jousted. And the Queen of Love and Beauty is... Um... Alla. Who he's married to. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, wow. He is very, very good at jousting. Fantastic news. Uh, and that's... So, Tyler and Roderick Wainwood were in the finals. Roderick... Being almost as good, but just a little bit too drunk. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. And the tourney is over. How are we looking on our opinions? Harlot has jumped into negative again. I can twist them slightly, but that, you know, need a little bit more there. Um, I'm not going to go to this tourney. Because we've had too many. Daria Sand wishes to duel her rival, Elia Sand. Okay, I'm going to allow it. Yeah, we'll see what happens there. My, my dear Prince Oberon, I wish to formally invite you to my court for a period of festivities leading up to my coronation. Sincerely, King Marek of the Iron Throne. Well, I guess I'll attend. You know, appearance is everything. Oh. This person was just murdered. Interesting. Uh, King Marek decided to call for the attention of all his guests before tonight's dinner and spent a great deal of time decanting the virtues of a good king. Sadly, his speech was stale and filled with platitudes and not many believed in the conviction that he proclaimed to have. What a shame. During the evening, King Marek has remarked on multiple occasions how it is important for a new ruler to create a stable diplomatic relationship with his peers and subjects in order to ensure peace and prosperity for everyone. He showed his show of dialects has been a revelation for all the guests. I might even learn something from his example. Mm, no, I got some prestige though. That's fine. Right. Oh, no, I thought the sound that was the sounding of someone dying, but no, it's the sound of the coronation. King Marek kneels before the High Septum the 22nd as, he, as his host of lords and knights surrounds him in complete silence. His Holiness, the High Septum, blesses him before placing the crown upon Marek's head, proclaiming him King of the Andals, the Reiner of the First Men, Lord of Seven Kingdoms, and Protector of the Realm. Alright, cool. And the ceremony is over. And we're back. Okay, what can we do? We can extort our subjects. Not going to do that. Knight's uh, watch is under attack. From who? Who's attacking? Chief Torrin. Uh, we're, we're, we're a bit far away to ride. It's fine, it's just wildlings, they can deal with them. Seems my dalliance with uh, Alaria has resulted in a child. Fortunately, Sir Eager thinks little Oberyn is his. Could you have been a little bit more subtle? That's all I'm going to say, just a little bit more subtle and not name him Oberyn. You know, 
Um, and how did he get the bloodline? Is the bloodline passed down anyway? Oh no, he has the bloodline. Oh, okay. Oh, that. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, right. Let's see. Uh, close that. Is that the same bloodline we have? That's not bloodline. Yes, it is the same bloodline we have. Ah, oh, learn something new every day. Sorry, my mic is falling apart. You may have heard some moving around there as I tried to fix it. That's fine. Uh, let's carry on. Right. Uh, we have another daughter named Mariah. Okay, cool. Uh, that's not what I wanted to do. It's this one. Uh, what are we giving her? Let's give her a thrift education. That works for me. Right. Uh, you're inviting me to the tourney at King's Landing. Yeah, sure, I'll attend, I guess. Why not? Master Torn has uh, shared one of his latest ideas with me. I don't know much of medicine, but perhaps he's on something. He's asked me for some money to develop his theory further and write a book on it. Yeah, sure, we'll give him some money. That's fine. Uh, charity work is going well. I enjoyed Lord Bufort's uh, company, and we talked in the garden for several hours before we both fell asleep. Maybe because of all that wine we drank. Lord Buford is my best friend. Ah, oh, well, isn't that nice? Sunspear is suffering from a very serious problem of crime and banditry, while my sheriffs are unable to control the area. With my sheriffs unable to control the area. Uh, although it would make me look weak, perhaps I could use my attendance at the feast uh, to ask King Marek for aid. No, I can deal with it. Much thought and consideration have been put into the courses served at King Marek's feast. The venison was so tender it almost melted on the tongue. The boar were delicious and the cheese is many and palatable. But the dessert outdid all the other dishes. A large cake with cream, honey and berries. And say they're heavenly. And say people are starving and you serve this abundance of food. I'll keep quiet about the food. Uh, I'm going to keep quiet about the food. The feasting has begun and the endless courses King Marek ordered are impressing the guests. The pinnacle of those of these is an enormous pie surmounted with smaller pies forming a crown. The crust of the large pies are covered uh, silver are sil the crust of the pies um, are silvered all round and gilt and gilt at the top. Each pie contains a whole roe deer, a gosling, three capons, six chickens, ten pigeons, one young rabbit, and no doubt to serve as seasoning or stuffing, a minced loin of venice of, of veal, two pounds of fat, and twenty six hard boiled eggs covered with saffron and flavoured with cloves. Okay, cool. Right. Uh, first day of jousting. Who am I going to place a bet on? Manfrey Martell's in it. Uh, Timoth is not there. Yeah, I guess I'll put five towards Manfrey. Why not? Yeah, five. He's not going to win, but you know. Solidarity. I bet has been lost. He's out straight away. First, first one again. As someone is grievously injured. Okay. And someone else is the winner. So we've got... Uh, oh no, the, these aren't the winner of the tournament. These are winners of individual ones. Individual ones. Right. Sir Kedge Ellister and Sir Patrick Edgerton faced each other in the final joust. After many tilts final light scooting jousting, Sir Patrick was on horse, leaving Sir Kedge Ellister to be declared the winner. Fantastic. Not as much competition as the one in High Garden, but you know. Still all right. And his wife, um, Dinah, was made queen of uh, love and beauty. Yeah, makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. My lover is with child. Okay. Ooh, my friend has become better. Oh, wow. He is much better. He's now a holy warrior and organizer. And the tourney is over. Uh, try... Uh, news from King's Landing of a trial by combat. Sir Kristen Wainwood demanded trial by combat from his captor, King Marek Baratheon, selecting Sir Roderick Wainwood as a champion. Sir Roderick slayed his opponent, Lord Torig... Uh, Tor... Toggarion? Toggarion? Togdarion? Anyway, Togarion? Uh, Stokeworth, and proved... Uh, proving Sir Christian's innocence. Okay. Kriston's innocence. That's fine. We have weak claims that we can press on the trident. Oh, that's for Sansa, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't quite want to press those at all. Right. 
Uh, Lord Tion Stonton was imprisoned by King Marek Baratheon and was stood accused of sedation and conspiracy. Sir Willis Riker presided over the trial, during which the prisoner ultimately found innocent of all charges. All right. All right, good. Still waiting for a chance to potentially um, get some opinion over here. We need a lot more opinion, actually. He's disgruntled. Why is he disgruntled? Uh, who knows? Yeah, why not? Let's try it. I've decided to seduce my own uncle Balin. The sheer taboo of it is thrilling, but the scandal, by the gods, the scandal would be epic. This seems like it's unlikely to work. Trial of Seven. The Trial of Seven is a form of trial by combat linked to the faith of the Seven and Andal tradition. The Andals believe that seven champions fought on each side. The gods thus honoured would be more likely to see justice done. Lord Paramount Tiger Lannister has challenged King Marek Baratheon to such a trial to try and prove the, his innocence before the gods. And both have summoned seven champions to King's Landing to fight for their cause. Oh, okay. So we got Sir Joffrey Swift. Uh... Lord Ontario Jass, Tylan Serret, Ormond Payne, Patrick Fosaway, Florin Brindlewood, uh, Lord Commander Loris Tyrell, Sir Rupert uh, Massey, Lorian Payne, Ethan Brune, Tiget Deadwick, Barris Hunt, and Royce Redfort. Okay. In the midst of the melee, Lord Paramount Tiggit Lannister has been slain, thus clearly proving his guilt before the gods. The gods clearly did not favour him. Oh wow. Prince Oberyn Martell, to assuage any doubt to my rightful claim to the Kingdom of the Westlands, I will hereby adopt the arms and words of my ancestor Lord Paramount Melwyn Lannister. Wait, but this is Balin's son. This is my cousin has now taken the Westerlands. So he's Ironborn, but he's calling himself Lannister. That is a very, very weird turn of events. Wait, how did that even happen? Um, wait, wait. How did that happen? Let's just go in here a second. So. Your mother is Lady Liza Lannister. Okay, and she was sibling to Lord Paramount Tiger. Okay, well that makes a little bit more sense, but still very weird. Anyway, I'm going to end the episode there. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.